Welcome back, everybody. Today's video, as you may have guessed about the title, is aimed to create a discussion around the fact that Dota, as well as Deadlock now, at least for the time being, have ranked matchmaking predominantly for solo queuers. So it's geared towards solo queuing. It really dissuades party queuing, makes it more difficult, long matchmaking times, makes you find other parties, etc. The rules in place, especially at the highest level, are aimed towards people solo queuing. And I'm aiming to create a discussion about if that's a good idea or not. And I'm going to go ahead and provide my insight to the answer to that question in the following video. So without further ado, the reason why I thought to make this video is the conversation, the thought came back into my head reading the recent Deadlock patch notes. And in the patch notes, they said, these are the same makers of Dota, obviously, but there's going to be a new ranked matchmaking system. Obviously, they said they expect to iterate on it on the future, but the focus is that the queue will be solo only at the moment. So let's be clear. My entire Dota career, I was a solo queue believer. I was a purist. I would be like, yeah, if you don't play solo queue, that's not giving your accurate rank. So these are kind of the common arguments that I would use that I hear other people use is that the only true test of your skill, your individual skill is solo queue. Because if you're playing consistently with a lane partner or with an entire group, your ranking is actually going to match the team or the duo's power rather than your individual skill. What I want to be clear about is that I don't want the idea of somebody being allowed to solo queue to be gone. Yeah, I, I think being allowed to solo queue for that exact reason, testing your own skills, being able to work with teammates regardless of who they are because you're just kind of knowledgeable about what you're supposed to be doing in the game. I don't want to remove that. That's not the argument I'm here to make. I'm not here to say this way wrong, this way right. So the argument that I'm trying to make for the sake of this video is whether or not matchmaking should be geared. The rules should be catering to the solo queuers that believe this type of thing. A common complaint that I've heard in Dota endless times especially in the highest MMRs, is I'm solo queuing, I'm being placed against two stacks, five stacks, and they are just more coordinated than me. That makes sense. They're probably in a Discord call, they're coordinating their spells in lane if they're a duo queue, they're coordinating their map movements and team fight execution if they're a group of five. All of that makes sense, and that is a reasonable complaint. Now, the question that I'm posing to you is, should the fix to that be to gear ranked matchmaking towards that complaint and make it so solo queues only play against solo queues or duo queues only play against duo queues? Or should the system be left in place to encourage solo queue players to beat what they're losing to? Which is like not, if you can't beat them, join them, right? Which is just duo queue trio queue, like party queue, entire stack of their own. That's my argument for this video, is that not like right now, the deadlock system that they're putting in place, it made me think about the fact that what does Valve think about the Dota 2 matchmaking system? I have paused playing Dota 2 because of the Dota 2 matchmaking system. And so I know they're spending a lot more time thinking about deadlock. So now here's me thinking about all the time that I spent playing Dota 2. And now... I'm asking myself, do I agree with what I used to think? Do I agree with what they're currently doing with Deadlock? Do I think these games should be geared towards a solo player? I know I've repeated that question a bajillion times, but this is something that in the past I spent a lot of time on and I also like thinking about, and I also was pretty damn sure that my view on it was correct, which was solo queue purist, every game should be solo queue, like get out of here, duo queues. And so the issue that's presented if you separate solo queues from duo queues at the highest MMR, especially when there's few players, is that you don't find games if you duo queue. This brings me back to a story about watching an Ace interview and then watching also Ace and Tofu talk about it a bit on Twitter when they banned all Smurfs. So here's basically what happened. Ace and Tofu, three and four position for gaming gladiators, they duo queued like exclusively and they practiced with each other. They didn't see a purpose to play pubs with anyone else because like they're laning together in professional matches. So it's their time to practice working together, all that kind of stuff. Practice combos, 
that they haven't tried in scrims yet to see if they can bring it to the team atmosphere. There's a lot of benefits for them. And they were both so high ranked that they literally couldn't find a game duo queuing if they played on their main accounts. So their solution was to play on their Smurf accounts simply to be allowed to duo queue with each other. Now that's sad. That's actually sad that they have to Smurf in order to play together. Like, I don't think a system that makes players do that is a good system. That's my personal take. Now, what ended up happening was they banned the Smurfs. Obviously, they Valve released that huge ban wave on Dota 2 Smurfs. And so Ace and Tofu were just like, well, we still can't find games on our main. You kind of just removed our only option. We don't want to Smurf, but you just removed that option without giving us any other option. And that's the part that I'm seeing already potentially happening in Deadlock in the early stages, which is tragic. And so this is what I thought about. So I took that story first and I'm like, wow, those players are some of the best players in the freaking world. And they valued getting better at the game with their teammate. Now that makes sense. That maybe is only limited, you could argue, to the highest MMR players in the world that are trying to go professional. But is it? The next point that I would like to get to is a little personal anecdote about why this came to my mind in the first place. And so bear with me. I've been thinking a lot recently about why I'm not playing Dota 2 solo matchmaking, why I'm like not necessarily feeling as fulfilled, just solo queue matchmaking in general. I started playing Deadlock with the Sing Sing stack, which has been an amazing experience, by the way. It's the same as Dota Q and Dota, or Party Q and Dota. And it basically made me realize that playing by myself fucking sucks. Even if people are not of equal skill level, whether I'm worse or better than the players I'm playing with, there's communication, there's coordination, there's team fights, there's like reviews after the game, like getting to talk to people about what we think went wrong. And so my personal anecdote is that I talked to a friend of mine and he's a manager and he manages like entry level people into his company. I don't want to like give details. And he told me that he's considering quitting his job because his job is heavy. And I asked him, you know, what does that mean? What does that mean to be a heavy job? And he basically explained to me that the entry level people with all due respect to them, don't need to have really any qualifications to get their job. And he deals with all kinds of people, all kinds of especially emotionally unintelligent people that you rate him and get really upset with him and blame him for like all the corporate decisions that he's simply being a messenger to them. So he's gotten really good at putting out the fires, coaxing them, making it work regardless. Now, to me, you might guys might get what I'm getting at here. That sounds eerily similar to bringing down the carry player from tilting off the face of the earth to talking your mid out of destroying his items, right? That's exactly what I heard in his description of why his job was taking a toll on him. And so for me, I was like, it really resonated with me what he said and I've really realized how important it is to surround myself with people that I want to work with. And that's part of what I feel like solo queue has removed from video games. I, even as a coach, preached solo queuing as the best option to getting better at the game. But when I think about it, when I was getting better at Dota, I almost exclusively played party queue. This was before Ranked came out. I almost exclusively played with my friends and I got way better over time especially discussing lane matchups, discussing what we're going to do, the approach to the game, like hearing feedback from people that I have rapport with, that I trust, that I feel like they're only going to give me feedback if they really think I need it, right? Not like feedback of you fucking suck or why'd you lose your lane from some random person. You know, part of me regrets coaching that mindset. I think there's a degree of what solo queue can offer you, practicing heroes, kind of doing your own thing, less worried about the team aspect of the game and kind of focusing on your job. There's definitely ways to work on that, but these team games require communication and coordination and basically conveying your thoughts, ideas, criticisms, concerns in a timely manner, in a non-toxic, constructive manner that can be used in the moment. That's what these games require. And also a lot of these games, Dota 2 especially, you don't have time in the game to like discuss what you want to explain. Half the shit I'm saying, you can't even talk to them about that during the game because like you need to play the game. It's too high tempo. So playing with people that you're going to discuss the game with afterwards, I think is absolutely essential to getting better at the game and getting better at 
your understanding of what other people are thinking and how to coordinate and what other roles are doing and what they need from you, what you can do for them, like what they can do for you, like what they offer you and how they think. I think this type of stuff, like imagine trying to learn anything outside of Dota, like school, relationships, anything with no ability to discuss. As a streamer, I pretty much got pigeonholed into only discussing this stuff with my chat. And with all due respect, they weren't in the game. Most of them weren't attentively watching the game. And also most of them are way lower ranked than me. And it's not that I can't learn anything, but you know, over time it's mainly me explaining myself rather than getting any reason like, like honestly credible feedback on from somebody of equal to approximate skill level and knowledge of the game. So where am I going with this? The entire point of this video was to create a discussion around solo queue matchmaking being the center focus of ranked. And, you know, there's all types of arguments that people are probably going to give in the comments. People are going to think about, you could just go play unranked, all that kind of stuff. Now, I get it. I want to play devil's advocate. I get all of these complaints and comments and it's kind of similar to when I said, why is toxicity so normalized in Dota? So many people just said, just mute people, just do this. And it's like, okay, I get that my reaction to the system can be various things, but like, can we also talk about the system, right? Can we talk about whether or not we like the system? So if that's your gut reaction, please stop. If you're in the middle of typing that comment right now, I just don't. I don't need to hear like what I could do myself. I want to talk about the system. I've already had to think about what I can do myself for fucking years, okay? So what I'm basically thinking is that when I talk to my friend about his job and everything, it's like, we've learned what to say in these circumstances. We've learned how to put out these fires. I know how to talk that carry player down if I wanted to, like I know how to do it, but this is kind of the human experience. It's not enjoyable to go through the same problems over and over and over and over again. It's my job to learn how to not be that guy in the first place. And then also to deal with that guy in a situation where somebody is emotionally distraught and they're ready to break their items. But once I've learned not how to be that, how to not be that guy, and also how to talk that guy down in case anyone around me, you know, has that moment of weakness, maybe I'll have a moment of weakness as well. Nobody's perfect. It's time to move on. You know, it's time to move on from this problem and learn more, honestly, emotionally intelligent problems, like learn above talking the guy down, right? I know how to keep myself stable. Now I know how to help other people when they're struggling, but I don't want to keep helping people who are just like fucking holding the team hostage. And it's the same thing with his manager job. He knows how to deal with these people. He knows like he's learned a lot, but it's just repeating the same problem and it gets exhausting. It gets absolutely exhausting to face the same problem over and over. So if I solo queue, it's also promoting me or like it's also encouraging me to repeat the cycle over and over again. And it's also for people who are those people, it gives them no accountability. In the next game, they're gonna be with different people anyways. There's like no accountability for their actions. Imagine if you behave like that and you're in a duo queue, like that guy can just not play with you anymore. And suddenly you're like, wow, I literally can't find anybody that wants to play with me when du duo queuing and party queuing seems like what people should be doing and nobody wants to play with me because I'm an insufferable prick. So I believe in systems that like hold people accountable, make people want to be better, push the envelope on what we're learning and what we're like growing and how like we talk about all the reasons that solo queue and Dota fucking sucks. And I would like to say that catering to the solo queue players, how like what percentage of people that enjoy party queue are toxic now what percentage of people that loathe party queue only solo queue are toxic that's something you you know like the people that would argue against this what on average do you think their toxicity levels are why wouldn't you want to play with friends or find somebody else of approximate skill level and work with them why wouldn't you want to do that i in the past struggled immensely with communicating my problems like when i communicated frustrations when i communicated like what i didn't like about what somebody else was doing i was very passive aggressive and it was not constructive at all. And that's that was the me that believed you should solo queue exclusively. And it's like, it makes sense. I wasn't good at communicating. I don't like generally get along with somebody over the long period of time. So I'd rather just solo queue and I want everyone else to do that too. I don't have to get better at that now. So obviously you can tell this hits a sensitive point for me. It's like looking in the mirror. It's like asking myself, you know, are we just repeating the same cycle? So 
what I'd like to say is this. I think if it isn't clear already that solo queue being the center focus of ranked is a huge mistake. I think it's a mistake that is difficult to remedy in Dota as the culture is already kind of too far gone and or at least like it's been in place for so long and it's difficult to change something that's already in place rather than just when you're creating something new to do it differently. You know, whether or not a single deadlock dev sees this, whether or not a single Dota dev sees this, whether or not it just creates discussion around the fact that maybe it's time to stop catering to the people that we don't really agree with or the people that are generally toxic and not contributing positively to the community. And I would like to work on high level coordination. It doesn't have to be with a TI winner to learn high level coordination, to practice team fight spellcasting, to practice map movements and coordination and talk about the game conceptually. That can simply be done by playing in a duo queue, a party queue, three queue, four queue, anything. As long as, you know, you're enjoyable enough to play with as a person, you're nice to work with. These are skills that also translate into the real world in a positive way. And that's what I would like to see. I would love to see a system that basically says fuck off to the solo queuers who whine about playing against duo queues and party queues. I am fine if you solo queue. I am fine if that's what you want to do. But if you play solo queue, I think you should be at risk of playing like sure maybe they can try to match you with solos but they should put you at risk of matching against a six stack in deadlock or a five stack in dota and just getting absolutely obliterated because you are being out coordinated because i'm a firm believer that people only change if they have to and if people most people at least and i'm a firm believer that the solo queue players are the ones that are generally toxic generally the ones more likely to be addicted to the game negatively and would do anything to play the game. And they also like winning more than anything. If you're a solo queue ranked player, that's probably the thing that matters to you the most is winning. So if you're losing because of a system that encourages party queuing, my argument is, what do you think is going to happen from there? Do you think they're really going to stop playing? No, they're not going to stop playing. They'll come back. They'll probably try to figure out ways to beat it, right? And for me, that's a system that encourages growth. That's my perspective. I'd love to hear your guys's, especially on twitch.tv slash banana slam jamma. Like, I love to hear it personally rather than in the comments here because people aren't generally the most constructive in the comments. But these are my thoughts. These are the things that go through my head. A lot of people at TI came up to me and said, I love your Dota Diary videos. I love your philosophical videos. Very few people, some people said they loved how much rank they gained from my view videos and how they learned a hero. But these are my thoughts. These are the things that matter to me. These are what I can like spend a lot of my time thinking about and pondering what they mean to me and what I'm doing next and all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.